and the last time from uh, Nota. I'm uh, presenting this uh, small local office from Ljubljana. We don't have uh, really big international uh, uh, projects. We are like maybe not that we don't want to work abroad, but maybe we are not meant to work. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will first uh, introduce a little uh, about the concept of our work and maybe an important issue that uh, we, maybe I especially, but we keep in mind. Uh, we have this collection of uh, photos that we find beautiful and they really are beautiful, uh, no doubt. And they are like, uh, we often question ourselves what is beautiful. Uh, because we, in all these uh, conferences, we discuss many questions, big concepts, uh, everything, uh, functional problems. But we never question what indeed is beautiful. And I, I believe this, this is really important about architecture. What, what, what is this natural beauty? We know that we can uh, learn what is beautiful. We can uh, have this cultural uh, uh, side of the beautiful, but there is also some natural beauty. And I believe, I'm not completely sure, <laughs> that it lies between some, somewhere between a very simple algorithm that generates it a um, very complex outcome. Repetition is really important. And maybe a mistake somewhere in between these things. But and you can you can see that it's it is not always naturally generated, it's all it could be artificial. It's not it, it is often un unplanned. Maybe even this is maybe uh, uh, like the rule that it is unplanned. But uh, I will I'll go to the project. I will present four projects. Uh, uh, they are all like connected. They are maybe recent and maybe less recent one. Uh, once and uh, they have to do with heritage, they have to do with public spaces, and they have to do with uh, uh, tourism, of course. <laughs> and maybe to with tourism, how to do less in tourism, not more, not too much. But first of all, heritage, because maybe <laughs> this is. We are invo involved in this project for the last five years and just yesterday it was the conclusion of the second phase and it will last, I don't know, forever, maybe. <laughs> uh, it is a renovation of an old monastery in the uh, town of Ptui. This is northeast Slovenia. Uh, and uh, the, it, it is Dominican monastery. And it was like one of the key buildings from in in this medieval Tui. Tui was really very important in Roman times. It was the most important town in undoubtedly in Slovenia, but even further. It it was called Petovio in that time. It was maybe a little bit less important in medieval times. And now it's even less important, but okay, it's some regional uh, center. And uh, it, uh, this medieval tweet, which is encircled with these city walls, uh, formed around three buildings. At the, on the west is uh, uh, a Dominican monastery, on the east, maybe I can. The middle, the middle. But I think it's, yeah, you shoot yourself. Yeah, one uh -huh. <laughs> The, uh, in, in this eastern part is uh, Franciscan Monastery, and up on the hill is the castle. 
so uh, the, the construction of the building began in uh, 12th century or 13th, 13th century to be exact. And uh, it is nothing special really. It is really old, but it, it, is, it is just Slovenian medieval architecture is nothing like very rich one. But it has all these feet, maybe hundred layers, layering up. I, I believe that when they have some spare money, they built another window. You know, <laughs> it, is, it is just maybe 50 layers of different Gothic faces, Roman fa uh, Romanic faces, uh, Baroqueization, everything. Huh? The, the building destiny was not really happy. Uh, it was the monastery was dissolved in uh, 18th century, 250 years ago, and uh, since then it served like barracks, hospital, museum at the end social housing, workshops, everything. Mm. But... Mm. Yeah. And, uh, but, but it actually, it's better to have the building in use than to have it in no use. In, in these 250 years, the building was not really well, but it was still maintained and it is now present, uh, uh, like like it is. Uh, in, in in another case, if, if the building is not used, it will be demolished, like in maybe 20, 30, 50 years. So it, it, when when treating heritage is like very really important for me, that you find some usage for the building because just innovation by itself it will it will do no good. And uh, the future use of this, at, at the moment we started the innovation, but it was still the museum inside. But really pure museum, archaeological museum, but it was like some archaeological storage that you could, you could visit. It was nothing uh, to be uh, worth of music. But um, uh, the, the program which was chosen for, for the building was the uh, Performance center. Uh, uh, it, it, is, it, it was like Congress, Congress Cultural Performance Center, uh, which is not that far from uh, from the original use. It was always culture here because the monasteries uh, in, in the Middle Ages was, was uh, cultural centers, and it was always performance here in in the, uh, in the church. You can see here these many layers, Gothic, Romantic, everything. Mo uh, and uh, when we started to treat it, we were, it, it was done, uh, uh, we got this project in uh, 2010, uh, following, uh, it, was, it was like an, invited competition, but when we started the project really <coughs> at, at the time of the, you know, uh, this uh, competition, we were like really ambitious. We wanted to change the, the roof and everything and <coughs> do something. But when we started, we soon seen the, that it will not be possible to do anything. So anything. And then we, to avoid a lot of surprises, we just limit, limited ourselves just to the floor. <coughs> because the floor was like devastated and empty. And we, we done everything in this, in this floor. So it was like plumbing, heating, ventilation, uh, even lighting was inside. And we just didn't touch any of the walls. Just literally didn't touch. We did nothing inside the walls. These are ventilation elements. You can see that uh, walls are less or more 
rest, restored or renovated. It is, it is like this process is so long that it, it will took like maybe 10, maybe 20 years to finish, but they, they are lying first of this below these layers of paint, but it is so long that it, we couldn't wait. So it, it is a clear gap in between the floor and, and the walls, and this allows the restorators to finish the job when it will be finished. Even the toilets are strictly done like that, that they are all detached. So some of the walls are uh, renovated, there are beautiful frescoes there, but uh, some of the wall walls are just like they were. The only visible thing that we had to, to let as visible is this anti panic installations. So, uh, because if you type the, the, uh, the, the hydrate, uh, this uh, slumping or something, it's an unusable in the bank, in the bank starts. The only place in the, uh, in the building that we could detach this new floor from the ground, it was uh, the church, which is now main hall. Uh, we detached this because of basically three reasons. Because of the program inside, because we had to have uh, this visual contact uh, with the stage, because of uh, we wanted to divide this bar baroque uh, interior from uh, gothic findings uh, below, and because we have to show the archaeological findings on the floor of the former church. So this is new spectators slab. This is the stage. And it's all completely detached from the from the uh, building. You can see some leftovers from earlier periods. We now enter in the gothic phase of the of, uh, of the building. These are archaeological findings below. All the slab is supported on in two points, we just, with the excavation, we just were able to find these two points. Before there were four, and uh, just in between uh, in making of the foundation, they were changed to two, so we had to do this split. Uh, These supporting columns are st solid filled, just to be as thin as, thin as possible. The second project is not, it, it is recent, and it, is, it, it was done in the city of Valenia, which is like really recent city. We spoke before about a really old city. The city of Valenia is like 50 years old, and it, it was done like a garden city. It, it is just in between Maribor and Ljubljana, and it was done around the coal mine uh, in Velenia. Velenia was a really small village before and it was done like in this pure modernistic uh, way of green floor and the pavilion buildings on the green floor. But this was lost somehow in with, with these years of development. So the, the Almost every available floor was occupied by parkings, additional buildings in between the old buildings and so on. So we, we get a um, commission to, do, uh, to transform an old road, which was already pedestrian road, but it was still the, like, like road like, uh, uh, into a pedestrian walk path. And this pedestrian uh, walk path also crosses the, the river, which was in that time like in channel and completely hidden from the city. So we made this uh, 
uh, we took advantage of uh, this opportunity and uh, in this crossing point uh, we made some uh, like fluid environment because of the, uh, the flooding nature of, of, of the river because the river can become like really high at the times of uh, heavy raining so it, it has to be it had to be designed in the way that uh, it could be uh, I will show you on some photos what happened on the, on the river side we designed some performance area here this is the new bridge across the river this is the river sitting areas stage area and this is the, these are two photos showing that uh, what happens when the water is high. I mean, it happens regularly, at least two times a year. The other part of uh, this path is much na narrower than it was before because, because it was designed for, for cars, obviously. Now it's for pedestrians and it's narrow and it's not like straight and that is going in some fluid organic uh, directions and in the joints or in, on the corners it, it is a little bit larger to, to host some happenings or some things. So the space in between the buildings and uh, it's, it's set it is now free. I, I, I believe that it will be green again, liberated. At the end of this path, we made a really simple parking house, which is like really simple. No installations, not everything is naturally ventilated. We just uh, doubled the existing parking lot with we uh, dig in half a story, so we, we, uh, we have now two stories of, of that and then we hide the cars with a simple uh, metallic facade and uh, at the end of this uh, parking house now it's some public program, public toilets, some shops and the cars are com completely hidden now from from the pedestrian area. I'm going to quickly maybe through two tourist projects. They have in common that we just wanted to make less that the client demanded from us. So it, 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 it is always this question what how to persuade the client to not to do that much. Uh, I, I believe that is really actual, uh, that, is, that is like the question for Montenegro maybe. Uh, like, uh, because also the, the, the manage, manager, of the, the, when we presented the concept for, for doing this, uh, asked us uh, whether, why did you want to make it smaller than it should be? Because where the where did, where will the guest will take pictures or something in, in front of the entrance of the hotel? But uh, anyhow, he he has accepted the concept. So the the region, the the complex is a spa complex uh, on the Croatian border. It's like a rural environment, and we. Uh, were supposed to make a hotel in between two existing hotels, but uh, because of uh, like really, um, let's say, important uh, uh, thing that that uh, the, the this area was always really connected with the nature and the nature is beautiful around. We didn't want to close completely the connection from the area which is, which is here in the middle which is here in the middle Th these are cool areas, there are some villas some apartment villas 
this is one existing photo, this is the second one. And uh, with block building here, we would, we would completely close uh, this environment from the outside. So we didn't want to do this. And we find some old picture about the same thing. So we uh, divided the big volume into several small volume volumes, and then we we, we sped them on the slope uh, in the manner that we just cut the stripes in into this green slope <coughs> and uh, lift it, lift them up, and then uh, let them go down again at the other end, other end, the roof is green completely. And the facade is wood and glass, and it is clearly divided between uh, public areas of the hotel and uh, private areas, rooms. This is the atrium inside. The photos, the photos were taken at the uh, com completion of the product uh, of the building, which is like super normal building. It is nothing special in terms of functionality. And uh, these photos are maybe five years after. Then you can see that it's aging, and it, it is completely inside this green. And then, because of more demanding guests came into this spa complex, they <coughs> just wanted to have better swimming pools, better spa area, better wellness center. But they decided to use the only free spot available again, and uh, just in the middle of the complex and uh, we decided immediately, almost immediately, that we want to build a house-like object and, but, but maybe more like a landscape ar ar arrangement. So the procedure was like that. At, at the top is the hotel, which, were, which was built. Uh, this is the old pool area. <coughs> And this is this available spot. We just make a simple procedure. We divided the slot uh, in, with a mesh. Then we adapted the mesh uh, to the topographics and marked uh, the pedestrian ways. Then, then we lifted volumes uh, on the demands of the client. And then we divided these big surfaces into the human scale, let's say, because the, um, you will be really close to the facades and to everything, and we just wanted to, uh, because the exhibit is completely below ground, we just wanted to avoid this uh, sensation to being under the ground, so we just inclinated the walls slightly to, towards the uh, uh, and also you can see that uh, plants are not like building like it is like some park or something also sections and facades doesn't look like a building the facades are inclinated mostly only the, the, the facade that uh, hides some openings inside are vertical this is the path across the, the pedestrian walk uh, path across the roof. This is landscape arrangement on, on the roof, confronting the greenery outside. And this is inside. Inside is not like, it is like a rich volume. It is more than 10 meters high, and it has two floors, and uh, it is also, I believe, attractive one. This is a night image. This is the image from outside to the building and from inside out of the building. And you can see that uh, 
during the night time it gets like more void and uh, not not just volume. Like. So that's all. Thank you. Because I think it's uh, what I see. Um, it's very um, well. I think it, I can imagine a pretty courageous client going for, for this kind of shapes with all your explanations. Um, is it a friend of yours, or like, how do you? How do you? No, it happened like uh, that. The one of the employees in this uh, spa complex. It was a friend of my partner there in uh, in the office. So, but we had to do the first of our project. I didn't show the first of our project. We done a small uh, pool implementation on the, the old pool area. Uh, we had to do compet invited competition again, and also for the hotel, again invited competition with four different offices, and then we the direct order for the project. It was only this uh, this. Uh, one. But did you develop a good relationship with the client? Are you going to work in the future? With yes, them? it was difficult because he's greedy and everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's kind of human. <laughs> no, these were like really relatively cheap buildings, all of them. Mm -hmm. the, like the, the hotel was cheaper than 1,000 euros per square meter, which is really cheap for also for Slovenian conditions. Mm -hmm. yes. But, but he's like that. <coughs> he's just an employee, but sees this firm like his own, so it's... <laughs> okay, any more questions? Mm, thank you, Milan. I mean, I think uh, um, it seems to be like convincing clients to do less is a challenge and I cannot see that like happening in Montenegro talking to anyone like any investors or anyone that's just I cannot imagine that being an option so, um, so thank you <laughs>